What are the best enclosures to use to house your tarantulas? Well, today I'm gonna give you my picks. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species-specific care and husbandry videos, or all things tarantula-related, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss any content I come up with in the near future. One question I get asked a lot in the comments of these videos is what tarantula enclosure I'm using for this specific species, or what I would recommend someone use for their species. So I decided to make an entire video focused just on different types of tarantula enclosures closures for all stages of life. This video isn't sponsored by any of these companies. These are just my picks of enclosures that I like to use and use a whole lot here in the collection. Hopefully it'll help you out. We're gonna start off with different types of spiderling enclosures. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I am a big fan of AMAC boxes. They're relatively inexpensive, only cost them between like a dollar and a half to five bucks a piece. They're clear, they're sturdy, and very easy to drill ventilation holes into. And if you don't wanna drill a whole bunch of holes, it's also very simple to cut a half inch or inch circle and put in a screen vent. Now I know from a lot of the comments in my videos and on Instagram, AMAC boxes aren't the easiest thing to procure if you're in the UK or some other European countries. They just don't seem to be available for sale there. But really you can use pretty much any clear plastic box. One thing you need to look out for is that it has a lid that fits very securely. Almost any hobby shop anywhere in the world has clear boxes to store like just random trinkets and jewels or sewing supplies, I mean, you name it. I just go to a hobby shop or a art store and usually can find some kind of clear box that people use to store brushes or any kind of art or hobby equipment. You just need to make sure that that lid fits very snugly. And if it doesn't, then you need to come up with some creative way to maybe attach hinges or some kind of lock, some, some way to keep that lid securely fastened. But when we're talking about spiderlings, it really doesn't need to be very big. Your enclosure only needs to be about three times the leg span of the tee. So if the tarantula is less than an inch, two to three inches is about all the space that it needs to provide. If you have a hard time finding AMAC boxes or even small clear containers, another thing I can suggest is hitting up a hobby store or a card shop and getting one of the containers that they use to house baseball cards or magic the gathering cards. They're usually deep enough to hold a couple of decks and they have a little locking mechanism on them. So it makes them ideal for tarantulas. The plastic sometimes can be a little more fragile than your AMAC box plastic. So you need to be very careful when drilling in ventilation holes. But for your basic terrestrial and maybe even small fossorial tarantulas, these boxes work very well and they're extremely cheap, like a dollar a piece. Something else I find at a lot of craft stores and most of the time it's up by the register with the little bins of stuff that are between one and five bucks are these little acrylic boxes. Sometimes they're in the shape of hearts or flowers. Sometimes they're round or square and like to hold makeup and, and other little trinkets. They're fairly cheap and if you don't mind the weird designs, they can make great houses for your tarantulas. And of course, if you wanna get top of the line, something that's premium quality, but but also cost a little bit more. I'm a big fan of these tarantula crib enclosures. They've got great ventilation, they're very clear, and the lids lock using magnets. So if you only have a few spiderlings in your collection and you really wanna show them off, I highly suggest checking out one of these tarantula crib spiderling enclosures. Now, when it comes to juveniles, we need a little bit larger enclosure. And again, going by that rule of thumb that we need at least three times the leg span of the tarantula, we're looking for enclosures between three to six inches in size, maybe even a little bit larger. Again, you can find AMAC boxes on websites like the Container Store, and I'll have some linked down below in the description in my Amazon storefront that you can check out. are a little bit more expensive, between four and eight dollars a piece. But again, they're sturdy, they're high quality, they drill really easily, and most of the time the lids fit very snugly. Tarantula Cribs also makes some great high quality enclosures for this size. Some lids with the magnet lock
and others that slide in and lock with magnets. They look great and they work amazing. If you're looking for something a little less expensive, I suggest checking out Pioneer Plastics. These are also available at a lot of different hobby stores around the world. But their display cases for GI Joes or Barbies or just different kinds of model cars and dolls. You just wanna make sure you get the ones that have the clear top and not the solid wood base. But they provide ample room for all types of different tarantulas. Whether they're fossorial, terrestrial, and you can even modify them to work well for arboreals. They're made of a very clear and durable acrylic that's easy to drill into. You can even melt the ventilation holes into them if you don't mind the smell. They're gonna run you anywhere between like 10 to $15, some of the larger ones being almost as much as 20 bucks. But if you've got a drill or a soldering iron and you're just looking for a cheap, easy enclosure, I've been very pleased with how they work out. And of course, if you're looking for a high quality glass enclosure, Exoterra, Zilla, and a few other companies make some amazing glass enclosures. These pretty much just work for your terrestrial or semi-arboreal species. And you need to take into consideration the fact they have a mesh lid that you may need to retrofit with acrylic so your tarantula doesn't chew through it or get their feet stuck in the mesh. But if you're okay with retrofitting those lids, they make great tarantula enclosures. You just can't use them for fossorials because they don't provide nearly enough depth. Now, when it comes to adult enclosures, you've got a whole lot of options. These are some of my favorites that I've had the most success with. Now, I will provide links for all of these down below in the comments, and some of them will be affiliate links. We'll start off with the most basic, and that's your five and 10 gallon glass aquariums. You can usually find these on sale at pet shops for a dollar a gallon, and if you get the right type of lid, they do work well for tarantulas. What you need to avoid are the thin wire mesh lids. When you use those, you run the risk of the tarantula climbing up the side of the enclosure and across the top, and they are prone to get their feet stuck in that thin wire mesh. If they're a fossorial or terrestrial, you could find them hanging there, and they could have been there for hours. There are many stories of people whose tarantulas have lost legs because they got one of their feet stuck in that mesh. But most pet stores do have a heavy duty screen top that has a lot of space in between the heavy gauged wire. That's wide enough that the tarantula won't get the little claws on their feet stuck in there. And they could even put their entire leg in there and remove it very easily. If you have a smaller tarantula species that only gets to like four or five inches at most, Pioneer Plastics has a large display case to hold like large baby dolls that I've had a lot of success keeping some tarantulas in. They run you between 15 to $25, depending on where you get them from. But their lids fit very snugly and it's very clear acrylic plastic. Another enclosure that I use a lot for my adults are the ZooMed Creature Enclosures. They have one made specifically for arboreals that works pretty well for your smaller arboreal tarantulas. You can see I use a lot of them right back there. I've also had a lot of success using those enclosures for my fossorial tarantulas. And you also have all of the reptile enclosures that are made by Zilla, ZooMed, and Exoterra. When it comes to arboreal enclosures, that's usually my go-to. I like the cross ventilation they provide and the heavy duty glass. Again, the downfall of these is the screen top, but it's very easy to rip that screen out and replace it with acrylic that just has some holes drilled in it. But these companies like Exoterra also provide some good options for your terrestrial tarantulas. I use a small wide enclosure that measures 12 by 12 by 12 for some of my semi-arboreal and terrestrial tarantulas. You just want to make sure that you use enough substrate that the tarantula doesn't have a long way to fall if it were to climb to the top of that enclosure. And for my Theraphosa Sturmy bioactive enclosure, I use the tall long, which I believe is 12 by 18 by 24. It gives me plenty of depth for the substrate so that it can do a little burrowing and it's long enough that that large tarantula has plenty of space to roam around, while also being short enough that I don't have to worry about that species climbing to the top of the enclosure and falling down. And in that enclosure, I also removed the screen lid and replaced it with sheets of acrylic that I drilled large holes in. And my favorite, but also probably one of the more expensive options is the Dreamco plastic enclosures. They have options for both terrestrial and arboreal, and these enclosures are specifically built with tarantula keeping in mind. They have adequate ventilation to provide 
optimal humidity, and the latching lids work great for almost any species. If you have a large collection like mine, it's probably not feasible to put all your tarantulas in enclosures like that. But I use those enclosures for the jewels of my collection, for the display tarantulas I really want to show off. I've got my Brachypelma Bamie in one, and my Monocentropus Balfouri communal in the other. And again, I'll leave a link down below for that company as well if you want to check out those enclosures for yourself. If there are enclosures that you use that I didn't mention in this list, make sure you leave those down below in the description so we can all learn from your experience. If this video was helpful and you found some value to it, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to see some other exotic pet content, check out my second channel, The Exotic Pet Collective, by clicking this video right here. And if you want to see me unbox some awesome enclosures from Tarantula Cribs, check out this video right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more content. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>